Well, political analyst Gary Dietrich joins us now. And Gary, we, Gary, we know that uh, pandemic fatigue is setting in, to say the least. A lot of people are wondering, though, what authorities can really do if someone refuses to follow this new stay-at-home order. Well, you know, Elizabeth, this is really going to be the, the big conundrum here. It's one thing to put out an edict. It's another thing to have it followed and potentially enforced. We've already heard from a lot of sheriffs around California who say they are not in their counties going to be doing enforcement actions. We had a fine, a potential fine in Sacramento County fail at the Sacramento Board of Supervisors level here this week. And so the real challenge is going to be our industry is going to follow it. And Marissa's story really laid out very well. The bottom line is this. There are many industries saying we need more data to validate that our industry is really a problem, say the restaurant industry. Yeah, all right. Well, Gary, shifting gears, we reported last night at 10, Governor Newsom's team is becoming increasingly concerned about recall efforts. So do you think that he should be worried at this point? And, and how might this change how he's governing? Well, that's a great question, because right now, the proponents of this recall say they've gathered about half of the million and a half signatures necessary to put it on the ballot. That's really half of the job. If they qualify, and they have until mid-March to do that, and that was, by the way, an extension that was granted them because of the pandemic, then comes the campaign. And, you know, Governor Gray Davis learned the hard way the first time in 150 years it happened. It's a long process. It's not an easy process. But some say that the momentum around these closures that are happening now statewide may actually give a boost to the recall efforts. We'll see going forward. Yeah, we will. All right. Well, finally, Gary, California is preparing to receive the first doses of the vaccine, Pfizer vaccine, as early as next week. Um, we know healthcare workers and the elderly will, of course, be the first to receive it. But talk about who's after that. Well, these essential workers, that seven to eight million, it's been estimated of folks. It could be anybody from child care workers to people in grocery stores who have to interface with the public as part of their job. This is really becoming the challenge now. How do you prioritize this next very large cadre of Californians in vaccines? And advocacy groups for a lot of these different folks are right now very actively stating their case and making their case that their people really need it, including farm workers, for example. So we're going to see how this all plays out. We should see some guidelines coming out in the next few weeks, but this is not an easy task, this prioritization. Yeah, it certainly is not. All right. Political analyst Gary Dietrich, as always, thanks so much for your time.